Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is December 22nd. It's Takeoff Tuesday. I'm excited and grateful to be here with you today. Our quote of the day is trust yourself. Create the kind of self that you would be happy to live with all your life. Make the most of yourself by fanning the tiny inner sparks of possibility into the flames of achievement. National Conference is March 18th through the 20th. It's going to be three days of online training with our leadership from across the nation. Our theme is shift, shifting higher into focused transformation. You absolutely want to be there. So if you need to get work off, clear out those three days so that you can be fully present for that training. We also have our dates for a leaders retreat. We're going to be going to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, August 13th through the 17th. Very excited to see you all there at leadership retreat. If you were on a little bit earlier for the Generally Speaking, Bob Snyder talked about the Founders Webinar. That's something that we have every Monday. It used to be at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, but now it's at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, and that's on the Renatus Founders Live private Facebook group. Make sure you are tuning into that each and every Monday. Every week, we have our Thursday Private Capital Masterclass at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Watch your classes. Go through your Private Capital classes. We've got a couple of them in our AIT classes and then bring your questions as you start to apply what you're learning and this has just been a really really cool master class so every thursday at 6 p.m also every day we have our daily real estate action mastermind that's our dream call from 9 a.m to 9 45 monday through friday and every friday we've got our fabulous friday morning with lily partas from eight to nine and then last but not least, at noon from Monday through Friday, we've got our, or not our dream call, our Zoom up call. Our Zoom up call is with Scott Rowe, Michael Huggins, where we feature a story. So every day is a different story from someone in the, in the group who is reaching success. So we've got, I think over 40 of them now, all kinds of amazing success stories to put in front of your guests. So if you're not able to make it live or your guest isn't able to make it live, we do record all of those Zoom up calls and you can find those on our YouTube channel, Elevate Renatus. There's a whole playlist of them. They're only 15 to 20 minutes long, short and sweet, but very powerful. And oh yes, oes.com is a place where you can find out more about the optional event subscription. Michael Huggins put together a short video that talks all about what it is and why you want to be a part of it. And you can also sign up for the OES through that website. Last week, we did an awesome house tour. We are, well, we did a, it was a, not just a fix and flip, but a, fix short-term rental. So they're fixing it up, holding it onto it for a short-term rental. The purchase price was 360,000 and they are putting 35,000 in to fix it up. It's a five bedroom, three bathroom. And the rental every month is gonna be bringing in around $5,000 as a short-term rental because each room is bringing in $40 per night as opposed to if they were to rent out the whole house. Traditionally, that's 1,800 versus 5,000. So that just shows the power behind short-term rental and just the, the different strategies that we have access to with our education. Our events are a little bit different this week. We've got Christmas this week. So on Tuesday, today, we have our profits intro at 1230 Mountain Time. And then also we have our, what we normally have on Wednesday will be falling tonight. So we've got our house tour. That's at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And then we also have at seven o'clock our AIT bonus track study group, which is offered in English. The house tour, or excuse me, the, the study group is in Spanish, the house tour is in English. And then tomorrow night on Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have what we normally would be doing on Thursdays. We have our house tour that's offered in Spanish, and then everything else will be in English. Our Pillars of Wealth intro presentation, our follow-up and funding webinar, we've got an onboarding session, essentials, study groups, as well as uh, multifamily, wholesaling, and short-term rental. As I mentioned earlier, we record these calls. We're on our Facebook page, Renata's Team Elevate. You can catch these recordings on that Facebook page. Just search for Takeoff Tuesday or whatever the day of the training that it is. Search for that on the Facebook page and you'll find these recordings. And then also our YouTube channel has not only these morning calls, but also the Zoom up calls that I mentioned just a moment ago, Elevate Renata's YouTube. So make sure to subscribe to that channel, join the Facebook group, and take advantage of those two resources. Today, it's Takeoff Tuesday. We get to learn from Bill Predabon. Bill spends an hour with us each and every Tuesday. I'm so grateful that we get to learn from him because he's been very, very successful in this business. He's got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. 
and successes to share with us. Bill before Renatus was a pro skier and he was a pro skier in Vail, Colorado. But after doing that for so long, he realized he wasn't qualified to do much else and knew that he needed to get into something different. So he actually bought into the franchise world and owned a couple of stores. And due to lack of knowledge that he ended up losing everything and having to sell the stores. In 2007, he learned about real estate investing and without education, without getting educated, he just dove in and attempted to do real estate investing on his own. And he found himself during the 2008 crash in over $400,000 of debt just due to lack of knowledge. And after that is when Bill finally found Renatus, got educated. And in his first year alone, he made eight times more in that first year than he did the previous year working as both a loan officer and as a realtor. Ever since we fast forward to today, now Bill has grossed multiple seven figures as a real estate investor. He's completed well over 150 transactions. And not only that, he is also killing it on the marketing side. He's on the pit team, meaning he's in training to be on the PAC, the President's Advisory Council. And so we have a lot to learn from Bill. So make sure to take notes. I'm excited for what he's got to share with us today. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Bill, are you there? I am. You are. Hi. Oops, my little video didn't come on. There we go. There you are. Hi. What's happening? Not much. How are you doing? Got my new Renatus hat on because my you dog. You your Renatus swag. I love it. I know, man. My uh, I love it for the mornings. Well, I know Michael's transitioned back into the dress. On the Thursday nights, I put on a nice shirt on, but. I like the Renatus garb and uh, and my dog ate my favorite hat, the gray <laughs> hat, the gray J hat, and they have it only in the large and I need a medium. So I had to get a new hat. I got a couple of them. So yeah, Love awesome that. intro, awesome job, taking care of all the business as always. Um, awesome to see everybody. It's good to announce everybody's name like you do and recognize people and say hello to everybody. Good morning, good morning. And uh, it's just an honor to be here, you guys. Uh, I can't tell you how blessed I am that Christian Sadler asked me and Michael to uh, ask me to join this group and be a part of this. And honestly, um, it's just been a blessing. And uh, and I I remember thinking I didn't want to commit every week for for like a year. And I remember thinking, am I even the right person to do this? And like, there's totally other qualified people. And anyway, all that stuff. But I'm just super glad that I just uh, said, yeah, immediately and uh, and would be honored to do it. So I'm honored to be sharing info with you guys. And, and uh, I'm grateful that you guys take your time out of the day to be with me. So it's pretty exciting. So thanks, Kiels, for all you do. I You're appreciate welcome, it. Bill. I'm really glad that you took this on, too. Uh, hey, Frank, you should shoot me a text, Frank, and then uh, you and I will catch back up. I appreciate you getting back on these calls, and um, and I'm glad you're catching up with your classes. That's great. Uh, yeah, we can we can chat after the holidays, whatever whatever works for you. But uh, we should catch up and get back on the path. All right. Um, I got a couple things to talk to you guys about, but like we talked about with follow up last week and all that stuff. If anybody does have anything um, this week that you want to talk about, take me on a um, on a uh, a journey with wherever you're going. Uh, I'd be more than happy to share that information with you. Share my opinion, my advice, my experience on that topic or question. Um, you know, you introduced me and you mentioned Keely. Um, you know, I made eight times the amount of money I made. I don't. I don't remember why. Um, exactly. But yeah, I only made like on my tax return as a loan officer and an agent in 2007, I think I only made about 17 grand uh, real estate agent. And I would have made more. I had way more in the pipeline, but you guys, banks were closing faster than loans. I swear to God, in, in 07 and 08, we went from like 1,350 banks to down less than 600 banks, I think. Um, literally, they were insolvent. And um, and they had to close. They were forced to file bankruptcy. The FDIC took them over, whatever that was. 
And a couple of my banks that I was getting loans for, my clients for, um, were closing. And, and one of them wouldn't even fund, you know, typically when they closed, they had allocated the funds to fund the loans that were in the pipeline that were approved. And, um, and this one lender I went through, Magnus Bank, um, they were a pretty aggressive bank. And they, uh, I don't know if there was some fraud involved or whatever it was, but the email came in and they just said, we're flat out now funding anything. We're shutting our doors down that day. And I had like almost 10 grand in commissions <laughs> lined up from that, from, that, uh, from that bank alone. Anyway, the reason I, I thought about it, like it, the way it sounds, honestly, um, Renatus really was the reason because I had to learn a different strategy in a way, and that was short sales. And Michael mentioned this the other day about Brian Sump. And Brian Sump watched the class seven times. That's probably why he's the instructor and I'm not, because I only watched it five times. <laughs> So I don't know, um, but, uh, but the um, watching the short sales class was not just, and I, you've heard me say this before, um, and then I'm gonna jump into some stuff, but uh, the, when you guys are watching your classes, um, you know, when I had it live, we had to pay attention. Like I couldn't be on my phone, um, I couldn't, uh, you know, I, you could get up and leave, I guess, you know, but, but if you did, you missed it for like two months, at least three months. So, um, it was, it was kind of, uh, you know, the good news is that we have it online 24 hours a day. The bad news is we have it online 24 hours a day because you can always postpone it. Um, and I had to go, if we missed it, we didn't get to see it again. And then we were only on a two year program. So, um, it was a whole different ballgame. Um, and it forced me to, stop what I was doing and pay attention to the class. And it was the only opportunity I had in person uh, at the time to, you know, get in front of the instructor and ask questions about the deals I was doing. We didn't have coaching. We didn't have Gavin. Gavin was the short sales instructor. And um, we didn't have coaching and all that stuff. So we've got it really good. Like when you're marketing this education, you know, thoroughly understand, Bob tries to make that, clear as to how valuable the the actual product is like you know i don't know if you ever watched uh and i think i've referenced this before because i always do but the firm is one of my favorite movies on the planet like if i was going to be anything in my in this world i'd be a lawyer and uh and the firm is like the coolest movie ever and there's a time at the end when he's dealing with the fbi guy and and the guy's like you know, uh, he's mad. He's like, what next? You know, you know, you know, this, we put these guys away, you know, there's going to be a, uh, you know, another law firm, you know, lining up right behind them to, uh, right behind them to take their place and work with the, the mob. We've got to get the mob, not the, not the lawyers. And, uh, and, uh, and Tom Cruise is like, you know what? I got mine. You get yours, you know, you finally do your job. And then he looks at him and he goes, you know, did you actually look at what I've got there for you? And that guy's like, what, a, a bunch of paper pushers, pencil pushers, blah, blah, blah. He's like, he's like, dude, there's, there's over 400 hours of, of overbilling. You know what I mean? Each hour punishable by, you know, a hundred thousand dollar fine and 10 years in prison. He's like, there's more there than you guys had on, on Capone. Right. And so obviously it's fictitious, but the point is, is that like, if we really stopped and looked at the product that we're pushing, like the offer we're making, the opportunity that we have for the individual coming, um, and you seriously considered the value, it may help you in your uh, ability to convey the message. And, and that's really all we do is convey the message, right? And, and, and just allow people to see the information and the problem why people don't make decisions is they literally don't have enough time to see all the information, right? Um, they need the opportunity to experience everything that we offer. That's why it's a three or four or five touch sale typically. And you can do that in a relatively short period of time in today's online world. Um, 
So this leads me up into this next section. Now remember, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, come off of me, raise your hand, interrupt me, you know, poke Keely in the arm and tell her you, you want me to shut up. And I will uh, answer whatever it is that you guys are dealing with because that's far more important than anything I have to say, all right? Um, in the meantime, I'll just keep blabbering and uh, hopefully bring some sort of message across that makes sense for you guys for this week. So this week is Christmas week and, and this leads me into um, the thing. So what I was saying is, you know, uh, we have to be able to understand it. Well, it's important um, that we understand what it is that we want to get to the information to the person and, and what we want to share with them, right? So if, if you're not doing a lot of real estate yet, which is totally fine, um, then you have the opportunity, as you guys all know, to study your education or to go to the property tours so you have examples of how the education works and you have the knowledge that you can share with people about how the product is used, right? That's the use of the product, right? Um, you know, Michael spent a lot of time and energy and money and resources on understanding the straight line persuasion and, and the fact that, you know, there are three things they need to buy, right? The easiest one is you, right? The easiest thing that they need to buy is you because they got to be at 10 with you because that's you. You control that. You know, you're genuine. Most of the people in Renatus are not thieves. We are not, uh, we are not people that have low integrity. We are not people that are, are non-abundant mindset. We, we, we are not selfish necessarily uh, when it comes to sharing information about real estate. We are not the traditional investor that, you know, has secrets and would, 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 you know, would do go at any length to get a deal done and that kind of thing. So you're already falling into that category. You're someone of, of integrity. You, you know how to edify other people. You know how to rely on other people. So you're, that, that part's easy to sell somebody. You're, you're, you're putting yourself out there. They're meeting you one way or the other. And you position yourself as a little bit of an authority just based on one or two classes you've watched or anything you've heard in the masterminds and you're good, right? The next thing they have to do is they have to understand the company. So hopefully most of you, and this is not a straight line persuasion training, so I'm going to be quick about this. Um, most of you have met Bob, um, you, you know about Bob, you know about the home team, right? You know, Jay Stark leads the incredible home team. Matt Snyder runs, runs the billing office and, and, and all of the different things that the home team is doing for us. You've called in and, and, and had conversations with our customer service. They're, they're incredible. Uh, their personalities and their, their patients are just beyond measure. And, um, and so, you know, Bob, if you don't know, um, you know, Bob has um, all of the information about the awards that the company itself has accomplished. You know, when you tell people we're a debt-free company, that is a pretty powerful thing because that gives the company longevity, right? Nobody wants to buy into an MLM or any type of company for that matter with the opportunity of it going out of business, being sold on the open market. Um, you know, the, the, the leaders of the group going to some other company, right? And then they take their downlines with them. You know, these are all real things, right? Um, in our line of business. And, um, you know, we're not a fad product, right? Um, we've been around. Bob's been in, in this space since 2002. Bob has a history, a successful history of starting up companies, right? And, um, and bringing them to, to multiple multiple million, hundred million dollar companies. And, um, and, and so all of these things about the company are important things that you understand, right? So that it's not like someone's going to say, you know, well, is the company debt free? But my point is, is I throw this, this stuff out there all the time. Like, it's just a, a matter of fact, it flows off my tongue to let them know, right? You'll hear Michael, Mike, uh, Michael Hovind say, you know, Bob Snyder's a genius, right? I get time with the CEO. Like, these are things that don't mean crap to me and you for the most part, because we hear it all the time. We, we just expect that Bob's going to get on the phone and, and have a conversation and, you know, that, you know, we're going to be able to have some sort of touch with the pack and, we, you know, all these. That's just not the case in the real world in most situations, you know? Um, people just don't give up their time on that level. Um, 
you know, people do not put in, you know, most CEOs are not, are not what I would call presidents. You know, they're not, um, they're not there to be a COO, right? A chief operating officer. They are there to be a CFO, right? I'm sorry, a CEO, right? And they executive, they're an executive. They are somebody that is in public relations. They are not operating the company. And Bob is the opposite. Bob is in the trenches all the time. Anyway, my point is um, get to understand the company. And then there's the product. And, and that's what I was going with this is that it's very important that you know the, the company. Okay. So you understand the product, you, you watch the classes, you know the masterminds, but I like to line them up and somehow I line them up in my head. But um, as you move forward, this is what, uh, what about, Bob? sorry, I had to cramp it. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, uh, this is so cool. So I'm just reading the comments. So here's what I had. Uh, this week is Christmas and then New Year's. And I'm guessing some of you are going to have some family and and there's always that there's always that thought about like talking to friends and family right and there's no question there would be no better time than to have a story about you know talking to one of your family members and signing them up right and, and the conversation goes well the problem with that is even me and I would imagine other people but especially me there's just never a good way or time to intro it, right? You're at dinner, you know, you're, you're open, I don't know, all the different things that you're doing with Renatus, uh, I mean, with, with the holidays, right? Um, we don't, we just don't. Um, we don't wanna sound weird. We don't wanna sound like we're selling something. We don't wanna, whatever it is that we don't wanna do, it's, it's not unnatural. It's not like wrong. It's not uncommon and, 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 so eventually we just decide if we're going to be desperate enough to do it or we plan for it, right? So one of the ways that we can plan for it is to understand, like, when you go this week to your family, the next two weeks, and spend time with friends and family and people you haven't seen or whatever, or people you care about, is to have a plan. You may want to have your videos lined up in your phone in a section of your phone, right? Keely mentioned um, the meetups, the zoom ups. Okay. So these are really good testimonies and there are over 40 of them. And, and obviously they pick, they picked so far. I don't know why, how they're picking people, but they're, they're probably picking people like, you know, Richie um, yesterday uh, who's, had some success, been in the company for a while, right? They're, they're just going down the list, right? So along the lines of all these people that have been on there, you have the opportunity to look at them and see their story and be able to have a half a dozen, maybe a dozen testimonies in your phone on a link that you can open up and share um, right away that will match the person that you're talking to. Now, this takes work. Like, like you've got to spend some freaking time on it, I guess. But my point to this is, is we want to have a system. If you are on purpose and you know what you're going to say and you know what you're going to share with them, and then you know you, how you're going to follow up with them, right? Like nobody wants to be sitting there being like, hey, what are you up to? You know, how's it been going? Well, you know, I'm still working my job and I'm really trying to get out of it. Or, you know, my life is the same, but except for Renatus, you know, whatever, real estate investing, whatever it is that you're going to, you're going to say, right? Whatever that looks like. Oh, how's that real estate investing thing going? No, you know, I haven't got my first deal done, but you know what I mean? We feel bad or, you know, what, whatever it is, you know what I mean? That we say, um, and, and, you know, then they're like, oh yeah, you know, I've always wanted to do that. I admire you for doing that or something good comes out of the conversation. And then you're like, oh, what's next? Oh, you should come to a meeting. You know what I mean? Like you should see it. Right. And then, and then that's it. And then we don't, we don't know, like, like, we don't know what else to say. Like, they're receptive to what we're, what we're saying. And all of a sudden, we're like, oh, what's next? What do we do now, right? Um, but if you practice it just a little bit in your head, and you have some resources at your fingertips where you know where they're at in your phone, 
right? You don't need to text somebody and find the follow-up. You don't need to text somebody to find the, a copy of the, of the review. You could, you could tag somebody right into the, the, um, the Facebook group, right? The, the Investors Nationwide, what's it called, Keely? Uh, um, Investors United. Facebook. Real Estate Investors United. Yeah. If you know how to do this right away, you don't have to use all of them, any of them, whatever you choose, right? Then, <clears throat> then you, you kind of have a plan. So if someone says, um, if somebody in your family is like, you know, I've always wanted to do that, or, you know, I, I'm surprised you, you're able to do that, or how do you know how to set yourself up business-wise, or what if you get in trouble, whatever, whatever intrigue question, like there, there's some sort of interest, then, you know, you've got a few quick questions, you know, what's, what's got you interested, or, you know, why aren't you doing it now, or, you know, you know, why have you waited so long to ask me about it? Or, you know, you don't want to just answer, right? We already know this. this isn't a training on how to interact, but to make things simple for the holiday, it is a training on, you know, th some, some of the things that I thought about, right? Like uh, that I'm thinking about doing, right? I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to have a solution and, and have a, a goal in mind of how to get them through the process so that I can ask them for a decision, right? And so, you know, back in the day, right, before pre-COVID, we all had a system, right? You go to a Thursday, you set an appointment on Friday or Monday, you try to get them there on Saturday, but usually everybody's doing stuff on Saturday. And then there was a monthly event, one or two or three monthly events that you'd get them to. You'd put them on a drip, right? You're working with one or two people. And then the next Thursday, they didn't, they didn't show up the last Thursday. So you invite them to the next Thursday. There's time in between for you and them to cool off. And then you're not as embarrassed and it's easy to call or shoot a text. Hey, can you, I know you didn't make it last week, right? It was an easy system, right? And what I mean by easy is there wasn't a lot of pressure to get information to anybody. It was a system and you accepted that the fact that you've got someone in the pipeline that might take three months, right? Well, now the opportunity for you to, to get someone through the system in a week is pretty good. And there's no excuse on either end other than whatever you want to, what you want to make. So um, the only the difference is, is we just don't know. It's so fast and we haven't done it well time enough, um, enough to become a habit um, that we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to offer them. We don't know how to find the follow-up. We don't even know what, what to do after they watch the video, right? Right. And, um, and so it's, it's important that we prepare for that. So, you know, when you're a couple of things, nobody wants to sit down and watch a 70 minute video together necessarily um, at an event that you're at with your family for the holidays, right? So you've got to come up with a few solutions, right? You've got to have a time set aside that you could offer somebody something to watch, right? And it could be a property tour and you could suggest that they watch it at two times speed. You could have the 15 minute zoom up and have that or the briefing, right? Um, and have the 15 minute briefing where they could at least watch that, or you could just open up and watch it with them. And then you can ask questions after it. You know, what did you like the most? You know, would, you, would this be interested if, 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 if money wasn't an uh, you know, something in the way and you found value here, would you want to pursue it a little farther, right? Whatever your questions are, right? But um, then you can say, you know, hey, you know, you guys, everybody's got plans for the holiday. They know what they're doing tonight. You know, they know that tonight's Christmas rehearsal or tonight's church or, you know, tomorrow's gifts and Saturday we're going to go shopping, whatever it is. And we can figure out when they can watch a 70 minute video. Hey, in the morning, you know, when all the kids are, you know, doing whatever they're doing or whatever, whatever it is that someone's doing, do you have 70 minutes to watch this video? And then I could talk to you about it, right? My point is, is I don't know exactly how it's going to go for you, but if you are interested in the holiday and you're interested in, um, you know, starting off the new year with a new team member, a new family member on your, then, then you have, you can, you can do that with a little bit of a plan. There's enough video and content and understanding that you can get it in front of them and it's not awkward, right? You can actually have a conversation originally, right? If I'm working with Keely or talking to Keely and, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what's going on. I've been working on this, you know, Renatus for a little while. Um, have you ever thought about even taking a look about what I'm, what I'm doing? Maybe I'm off my rocker. Maybe I, 
uh, you know, I, I bit off more than I could chew. Maybe, maybe I'd just like to see your opinion, right? It could be that approach. It could be, you know what? I've never seen anything like this. I give a crap about you. It's the holidays. And I would like to give you a gift. And the gift is your opportunity to watch Renatus, <laughs> right? So you have to be able to receive, right? If I give you a crappy gift, you still have to be like, oh my God, thank you, right? In front of the whole family and not be like, Bill, this is the stupidest gift you ever got. So with that said, you've got to be able to take my gift and watch it. Is that fair? Right? You, know, you can come up with something that's creative um, about how, and uh, Kim, you got something? Anybody want to just feel, feel free to come off and be mute. So, you know, even if you have to make a little bit of a joke about it um, and, and, and get them um, intrigued, but whenever, whenever there is some intrigue uh, at that point, you, and I'm going to lead me to my next point in a second, is uh, you guys, to have a video right there, like, just like, oh my God, like back in the day, we always just told a story, right? You know, and Keely's like, yeah, you know, I've thought about it, Bill. I've been kind of waiting to see what you're going to do with it. It's been, you know, six months. It's been a year, two years. And, you know, I just, I'm not sure that, you know, it's for me, you know, I'm busy, whatever the reason is. And, and I'd be like, listen, Keely, normally we'd be like, you know, my friend was a stay-at-home mom and she had three kids and I met her, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And this was her story, right? But now you just be like, you've got to see this video. Like, do you want to take 10 seconds, 10, 15 minutes and watch this? There's this, there's this girl, Cecilia, she's 23, blah, 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 blah. There's this guy, blah, 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 right? Real quick. And then what are they going to say? No, no. But they're going to watch and see a third party. And there they're going to begin with these little testimonies, you guys. People literally begin to imagine what it's like for them and not what it's like for you. They very quickly take the focus off of allowing them to have an excuse of what it's doing for you and more what it could do for them. Does that make sense? Like it's easy for a friend or a family member or a colleague to, to say, listen, you know, let me know when it works out for you. I want you to see what you're doing when it works for you. It's going to like, and that's a typical thought, even if they don't say it, right. It's an easy out because they don't have to confront it. Right. But as soon as somebody watches something and they're in, and, and it's very difficult not to be intrigued by, by some of the videos that we have, all the videos that we have, the testimonies, um, the, 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 even Bob Snyder's 15 minute, the briefing, things like that. Um, they begin to imagine uh, they begin to be taught a told a story and they start to imagine what it would be like. And, um, and they imagine they start spending the money that was made in this, in the testimony. So, or they live the life or have the freedom anyway. So this weekend, this holiday, two weeks, um, you know, for me, um, I just texted somebody this morning. She's the nurse, you guys, of all things. Like I woke up in post-op, uh, a week and a half ago and um and the nurse was the only one there right and her name's angie and i started talking to her and i don't remember why maybe it was the drugs but um we started talking about just all kinds of stuff and uh one of them being her social life and, and i was thinking about hooking her up with my friend joe <laughs> and uh, she recently got divorced and her ex-husband's a doctor there a surgeon at the place i was at and um and we started talking about real estate and retirement. And so I followed up with her. Uh, she, she, uh, she texted, uh, how did she reach me? Um, she said, hey, you are on LinkedIn. And I said, yeah. She said, well, I have a profile on LinkedIn. So I, for some reason, remembered that at a post-op. And I looked her up on LinkedIn, sent her a message. She got me a, got me a phone number. I talked to her on Saturday, sent her the video. And now I know exactly what my, my schedule is. So I did a call with her on on Saturday, after we text, we figured out a time to talk. And then I got her email and I sent her the email and the text of the, of the presentation. Had a nice first initial conversation to book her to the event. We were already there, but I was building a rapport. It's a warm market now. And then after the video, I talked to her, texted her the first thing this morning, walking the dogs. Let me know your schedule. Let me get a follow-up call, right? Um, before the holiday, I know it's going to get hectic. And... Uh, that way we can, you know, get some more information so you can think about it over the holiday when you're busy, right? And you can enjoy it. So my point is, is I know exactly the path 
uh, the funnel. You guys talked about the, 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 the flow chart as to where I'm going to go and when I'm going to ask for the sale. But a lot of times when we go to our friends and family at, at Thanksgiving, at, at the holidays, we, we are, are reserved a little bit on talking to them because we, what if they say yes? What, like, how am I going to get them in front of a video? How am I going to get them to a live presentation on Christmas Eve? Right? That's not what, what's going to happen, right? You, you, Wednesday night, tomorrow night's the meetings, and you're not seeing your family till Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, then you don't have to wait anymore till the next week, right? There's, there's, but you want to prepare for it is all I'm saying. I get this. Okay. So here's the other thing I want to tell you. Amazing content. Where did you get that awesome hat? Oh, at the top of Helios in the upper right-hand corner, it says Renata store. And you click on it and they have a whole bunch of stuff, water bottles. They have the new face masks uh, with Renatus on them. They have hats, women's apparel. I have a, I have an awesome, they have an awesome jacket. It's like 35 bucks. It's one of my favorite winter jackets and I'm a ski guy and this jacket kicks ass. And I also got one for my wife. The new, the, the one for the, the women is, is a little more form fitting and it's a tighter knee. It's a gorgeous, cool jacket. They got some cool stuff. That's where I got that. Okay. Just double checking the questions. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, Bill, I have a question. Please. So um, I have a couple of folks in funding right now and they could do billings in like the next week or so, but they really want the cash discount. So I'm curious what your process is with um, walking people through their funding options. Um, I used to send them findthemoney.info, but it's no longer in compliance. Uh, Nancy mentioned they have some kind of questionnaire and smart, but I'm not hooked up to that yet. I really want to get my plates spinning before I try to focus on like new systems and, and more automation. And I agree. Uh, yeah, I just want to get it done manually and have a few follow-ups coming up this week regarding that. Okay, cool. Do I owe you a phone call? Weren't we yes. talking about something? Do you want yeah. to talk today? Uh, sure. Yeah, I have some appointments, but we can definitely talk this afternoon if you're available. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff, but in between, I've got all kinds of time today. So text me and, and win a good time and we'll, we'll set a time. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. All right, cool. All right. So this is awesome, you guys. So um, right off the bat, like if I put somebody in billing for any reason, it's because it's a last resort, right? Um, or it's because someone says, I don't, I don't want any debt, right? They don't want any, they don't want to put it on a credit card. They don't want to borrow from wherever, a home equity line or anything like that, right? Now, if somebody says, I, I, want, I want the billing, but I don't, but I want the discount, my first question is, why do you want the discount? Like, what's the, what's the difference, right? You know, if, if you have, like, like I'm buying a property and I'll finish with this in a minute, but I'm buying a property in, Cal in, in, in Ohio and I'm going to get a $20,000 discount on the property, right? Because for me, it makes more sense to get the discount when I can get a loan from the, from the, I don't need to get the owner financing and pay the extra 20 grand unless I want it. Right. So, um, so when it comes to having a discount, if, if the object is to obtain the, um, the education, right? No matter the cost, right? No matter what the investment is, it's got the value. Then if the only way to do it is the, is the billing, what's the discount doesn't even, it's, 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 it's useless. Like I don't have a 750 credit score. You guys, I max out credit cards all the time with my business. And, um, I have a, a very stellar credit anymore. I've, I've taken a long time to, to never, to not ding my credit but my credit hovers around 700 and, um, and from time to time it's 680 to 720 with how much I use my cards. So especially getting new credit, I get new credit quite often and, um, <clears throat> and it's not good for your credit. So when I got, when I, when I got this uh, new car, um, I didn't get the best deal. Like literally I couldn't qualify for the greatest opportunities they were offering. I'm not an A paper borrower, especially like in cars, it's a little different, but mortgages, I'm not an A paper mortgage borrower because I'm self-employed, right? <clears throat> so <clears throat> I get dinged on rent on rates, but I wanted the car. Like this was the gift I was going to give Sherry. So the value of the car didn't, I wasn't not going to buy the car because I didn't get the best rate. 
Like I, it, that's what it was worth to me. So same thing here. Now, to answer your question, um, uh, what was I going to say? So the way that I, I fund is typically, um, I think it's, it's, it's a very easy, uh, analysis. It's a very easy, um, what's the word I'm looking for you guys? Like, uh, like a picture to paint, right? When you were talking to someone, most people we talk to, if you're like me, right? They don't, they don't own a car. If they own a car, there's no value, right? And they can't sell it or leverage it anyway because they don't have good credit. They don't own a house or they just recently bought a house and they can't get a line of, a line of credit anyway because credit lines are now down to maybe 90% and you better have good credit, like pretty darn good credit to get a home equity line of credit. Right. And then you've got to be able to afford the line of credit. You get a fifty thousand dollar line of credit. You still got to be able to pay for the 50 grand. They're not going to they're not going to give you a 50 line of credit and not have a means to pay for it. Right. So most people don't have much that we're talking to. They don't have a retirement in their of 50, 80, 100 thousand dollars that they can borrow 50 grand from in the 401k. They probably have 20 or 30 and they've already taken out a loan. Right? If you guys are talking to people I'm talking to. Right. So. These main resources, they don't have whole life insurance policy. That's few and far between people that have it, right? Most people are not going to sell crap to come up with 20 grand. They might sell stuff to come up with 400 bucks, but that's about it, right? So we've got to consider what the resources are. So um, when, when I speak to people about funding and I go through these main options, I'm studying them with them because I know that they're most likely going to hit a angel investor. Like that's going to be their option. And the angel investor may have these resources, may have the credit cards, may have the credit, right? Now, if I'm talking to someone who's got a good job and they've got kids and they've, they're, you know, or they've, they've, they've got a good job and they've, owned, they've recently bought a car, they've got okay credit, but they're kind of maxed out. They're kind of low on funds. Then I may consider asking them about their credit and increasing their credit cards, right? As some of the options. Um, let's see. So we got plenty of time. Rephrase your question again. Okay, thank you for clarifying some of that. I guess now I what the question would be is how to best guide them along having the conversation with an angel investor or how to coach them on, on presenting their and which I already understand because of raising private money, but I was just wondering what your process is with people. No, that's good. This is a great it. question, you guys. So okay. here's the deal. This is so powerful um, that you, you're asking this because the bottom line is when we get to somebody that, right? When we get to somebody that, okay, me, I'm 38. My car was repossessed two days before my wedding. This is 2007, August of 2007, right? I filed bankruptcy in 06, so my credit shot. I had three credit cards and they were all crappy three and $500 credit cards that I had gotten out of bankruptcy, right? I had no home of my own. My girlfriend, which was now becoming my wife, had already lent me enough money to keep me on my feet, right? I went through foreclosure on my property. I was out of money and I was already borrowing credit, basically getting restarted with my wife becoming an agent. And, you know, we had just bought this big house. I had, which was my, you know, my great real estate investing, you know, teach myself how to real estate invest, convinced her to buy this big house. Right. So I had no equity. Everything was hundred percent leveraged. I had no credit. I had no job. Right. I was completely broke. Now, the only thing I had was a good girlfriend, which is now my wife. And then I had a family. And so, um, I was willing to go out and ask people for money. It took me a while to get there. It took me 30 days to figure this out, like to figure out who and how I was going to get the money because I tried to qualify myself for student loans and stuff back then. And I couldn't. So um, I figured out a way to get a loan and I would, I was able to be the one that called my, my, uh, my family member and sit and have a hard talk with them and ask them for their credit to get my loan. All right. And I knew that I what I didn't want to screw up their credit. So I knew I had to borrow more money and I needed money because I didn't have any damn money to pay a new $300 a month payment. So like, like 
but I was smart enough or experienced enough or old enough to understand this, right? So here's what we got to do. There's a couple of things, and this, can, this is a perfect lead into the, into the end here. So when we get to the point where people need an angel investor, right? The majority of the time that I'm walking through somebody in all these resources, they are, they are dwindling down the list and they're becoming a five to 10% prospect that's actually going to fund, okay? It's just a fact. And if it's the only person you're working with, um, then we need to have a, lot, a hard conversation with them and be like, listen, if you're like, I'm talking to someone right now and she's amazing. She's followed me for two years on Facebook. She's ready to fund the entire thing, but she is not. And she even has a husband who would be willing to, to probably pay for the thing for her. She absolutely is not going to rely on anybody else because she's done it before. Given her scenario, her story is going to be really cool if she ever, you know, puts her mind to this. Um, and so she's going to do it on her own and she's going to save up the money. She makes over a thousand dollars a month that she can put away. And so she's going to save four grand. We picked a date when she's going to become an ICM. We picked the date when she's going to do essentials and we picked a date when she's going to do the combo all with the down payment and the billing. I'm not going to argue it. I'm not going to, that's, that's, that's her path. That's what she chosen. And that's where she's at, but she's willing, she has the resources as an angel investor, but she has physically at her age, believe it or not, no resources of her own to get this thing done other than being resourceful. So my point is, is the person needs to be so extroverted, so desperate, so something inside of them that they're going to be like, I've got the perfect person. I'm going to call this person up and talk to them. So in my opinion, if that person is there and they're like, listen, let me give you an example. I got to watch my, okay, perfect. So I worked with a guy off Craigslist and you guys know Craigslist leads. Todd is still a friend of mine today. He's actually going to re-engage. I hope this, this coming year, he's been gone a couple of years, a couple of good, almost two years now. And he's uh, like three quarters of the way to five-star qualified. It was crazy. And now he went to national. So he's three-star qualified, but he hasn't. Been. So anyway, my point is, is he comes off Craigslist, ends up in essentials UGA. And he's got a girlfriend um, who's much younger. They're doing uh, their paycheck to paycheck. Uh, best case scenario, right? Absolutely nothing to speak of financially. Um, poverty level income. And um, at one time in his life, not that long ago, he had made decent money. Right. And he had a good career. And so uh, it turned out that that's where they were stuck. And a little bit longer in, they, they hung around the community and they were interested in getting the combo. And one day she said, I've got my uncle and my, and you might have heard this. And her uncle is the owner and the heir of Coors Brewery, of Coors Incorporated. That's her mother's brother. So it's like a blood relative the two brothers that own cores. And she said, my mom is the white sheep, you know, black sheep in the family, never wanted the business. They kicked her out of the family. Basically she hasn't talked to her uncle in years. And she said, but maybe we could do something. So then Jenna, I stepped in and I said, okay, you get to reach your mom, ask her if it's okay. If you reach out to your uncle, if that's cool, then text your uncle, call your uncle, leave him a message and tell him that, you know, you would like, five minutes of his time to get on the phone with your mentor, your, your friend, somebody that you're working with to help you get better in life. And so that was it. And so she didn't make any conversations with him at all. I got on the phone with him and we began to talk and I explained, here's what I do. You guys, what people want is, is an opportunity. If you don't know Dr. Gary's funding story, you got to get it, but I only got five minutes and I got to finish with this story. So, um, uh, I got on the phone and people want, people want to do an investment. They don't want to lend people money. They don't want to, they don't want to borrow people money that have borrowed money from people before and never paid it back. That was me and my, my dad, right? I always, my life borrow money with the intention of paying it back. But we presented him with an opportunity. I said, listen, Todd's already found me on Craigslist looking to get into real estate. Todd and Lucy are with me now and they're working with me. They've already put $400 down. They're halfway done with paying off this $2,000 first step of this bill. They're going to do this with or without you. I edified the crap out of Todd and Lucy. And at the end, he said, he said, Bill, he looked at Todd. He goes, Todd, I want you. I'm going to Mexico to my place in Mexico. He's got this big mansion in Mexico. He goes, I'm going there for 30 days. I want you to give me your financials. 
Tell me your situation at home. Let me see what it is. Put it down on a piece of paper. I'll come back with an answer. 30 days later, he comes back with an answer. He gives him a $20,000 loan at 1% interest with, with, no, with deferred payments for the first year, right? And if he ever gets the money back, he doesn't care. But he set him up and he wanted to know where they were, how they can pay it back and what his financial situation and the fact that they were already doing some things, they'd already taken the steps and they weren't just borrowing money was a big deal. That's how I deal with people's angel investors. But I didn't find their angel investor. Lucy, after three months of being around, had to come to me and say, I think I have an angel investor, but I'm too afraid to talk to him. Okay, let's figure it out from there. She was resourceful to get me there. Now, let me finish with this. Bill, can we schedule a meeting? Kai, um, you guys, my number is 760-533-3141. it's in the chat. 760-533-3141. Text me more than once. I'll get on the phone with you guys. We'll figure it out. And we'll make a time to talk. Absolutely. Um, sometimes uh, it falls through the crack with Jenna. I've owned her for the call for a, a week. So she's first today. Um, okay. So listen to this. I'm on the phone with a guy today. And he's the owner of the property in, in California, in uh, Ohio. Why do I keep saying California? I guess I'm going to be buying a place in California soon. So here's what happened. He called me on Saturday and I was watching the, the, uh, the, um, the uh, Super Saturday. And my, my agent, uh, Ohio, texted me and said, hey, I gave your number to the owner. He's going to give you a call. I want to talk to you about something. And, and a lot of times we have fear of talking to people. And, and I just was like, ah, I'm busy. You know, I'm already under contract. What am I going to talk to this guy for? And, and I'm like, oh, and I forgot to call him. And I was walking this morning and I was like, holy crap, I got to call this guy, Lou. And, and, and he's, he's the owner of the property. And the conversation was unbelievable. I learned stuff about him. He's so nice. He's 78 year old practicing attorney. Um, we've got stuff in common. Um, he's telling me about the building. He's telling me about the secretary that lives in the upstairs unit, how he gives her a discount because she manages the property. He told me about how I'm getting a new heater because one went bad in the middle of winter here in, in, in Cleveland. And like the conversation was unbelievable. I want to reach out on the phone. I'm like, I'm like, I'm flying out to meet you, Lou. I can't. He's like, well, we've owned property. My, my son and I, he's your age. And you know, he's a very successful CPA and I'm an attorney. He's like, I love practicing law. I'm like, I love, law is my favorite thing. And, and we're having, like, it was, the, there's nothing better than having a conversation with somebody that actually wants and likes what you have. Like he's excited to sell the building. He's motivated to sell it. He's giving me a deal. I, if I don't close on the 7th of January, he's going to sell it to me a hundred, one year financing at 5% interest. Like he'll charge me an extra 20 grand, but he's like, no matter what bill you can close on this building, you're going to love this building. I'm so glad you're buying it. Like you guys, it, the, the right person with Renatus does not have to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be you. The problem we have, right? The, the, our, our own internal battle that we have is we, we deal with people who want what we want, but they're not willing to go get it. They're not us. And, but that's the only lead we have or the only one or two leads and our leads suck. And when our leads suck, we don't have very much enthusiasm about selling Renatus because it's a freaking pain in the ass. Like trying to convince somebody of something that is right so plain and simple to us, trying to get somebody to go find, you know, sell your stupid car if you don't have any freaking money to buy food. I don't know what your problem is, but we can't say that, right? But we don't always have to deal with those people. Sometimes we can deal with people like this girl, Patricia, who's so thankful she's been following me for two years. You guys, she reached out to me. I don't even know her. You know where I met her? She was going to rent my Airbnb in California. She's like, oh yeah, I looked you up on Facebook. I've been following for two years. I'm finally in the position to take advantage of this. She's been on every darn, she went to the Super Saturday just out of the booth. She wasn't even interested in marketing because she did MLMs in the past and she hated them. She absolutely loved the Super Saturday. She's buying this ICM come January 1st. She's buying the essentials January 3rd. She's buying the combo, you know, March 1st. Like she's lined it up. There's no, I didn't even have to sell her anything. I went through the funding options, but she doesn't want to do use her angel investor. You guys, my point is, is like, she's in love with the opportunity. I don't have to sit here and sell her on the opportunity. I just have to share with her the information. Okay. I'm over my time. You guys, I love you guys for listening to me. I, I, I wish I could just, if you guys got questions or thoughts or, or problems with your own situations, then, you know, just text me or call me and I'll try to work it out with you. You know, I spent an hour on the phone with uh, doing a real estate deal with Heather Hargrove. I, I'll get to it and help you guys. Um, 
as best I can. All right. Yeah. Good to see you, Thomas. Love you guys. Anne, you're welcome. Raphael, love you, brother. Glad you're on the call. Good, Keely? You everybody? Yeah. You guys cool? Yeah, happy freaking holidays, everybody. Right? <laughs> yes. Yay. Merry Christmas. I love you guys. I hope you guys, if you haven't seen the pack call yesterday, the, the, the webinar, you guys, the pack was on there giving great advice and talking holidays. So get on there and, and watch that. All right. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Exactly. Thanks, everybody. Mike White. Bill. Thanks, Bill. Bill, how's your brother? Bill, how's your brother? <laughs> he's even worse. He's, he's not drinking, at least. Thank you, LaShawn. He is, um, but now he's got some pretty bad inflammation. It might be autoimmune. They're actually moving back to Michigan. But he's alive, and uh, he's not drinking. <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's just dealing with, uh, with stuff. Hopefully he'll baby steps, baby, baby steps, baby yeah. steps. No drinking, yeah. baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks hey, for everybody. Being here. All right, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, Andres. Awesome. Reach out to me, folks. Jenna, I'll talk to you today. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Bill. Thank you. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Thank you.